The reason for the 15 volt tap is that any good quality, like I'll call it a professional grade landscape light, is gonna run anywhere from nine to 15 volts, uh, which means if you're starting at 15, it just allows you to run a lot more wire and a lot more lights down that 12 gauge uh, wire that we recommend um, and not run into voltage drop issues. You can run into as much as six volts, uh, drop at least six volts and still have this light operate with no hesitation. So that's basically you're talking about 100 watts of lights on 300 feet plus of 12 tube cable without running into any voltage drop. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. All right guys, so just gonna show you a couple quick uh, transformer troubleshooting tips that you can do once you have your transformer. Um, it's always a good idea to test it out uh, sooner rather than later. So we have kind of a, a mock-up scenario here where I have one path light that I'm gonna wire into the transformer, but just pretend this is our 12 gauge wire that leads out to our entire system. However, if you wanna test out your transformer first, this is a great way to go and do it. Just make sure everything works. Um, but if this was our 12 gauge wire running out to the field, basically with most good stainless steel transformers, you're gonna see something like this. You're gonna see a common tap and a 15 volt tap. Uh, typically, some of the larger ones, you're gonna see you know, a common tap, a 15, a 14, a 13, a 12, and then probably another common tap. Um, doesn't really matter. The key is you're gonna have the two wires coming off your uh, low voltage wire, and one of them is gonna go into your common tap, and you're gonna fasten that down. And then your second wire is gonna go into your 15 volt tap, and you're gonna fasten that one down. Now, the reason for the 15 volt tap is that any good quality, like I'll call it a professional grade landscape light, is gonna run anywhere from nine to 15 volts, uh, which means if you're starting at 15, it just allows you to run a lot more wire and a lot more lights down that 12 gauge uh, wire that we recommend um, and not run into voltage drop issues. You can run into as much as six volts, uh, drop at least six volts and still have this light operate with no hesitation. So that's basically, you're talking about 100 watts of lights on 300 feet plus of 12 tube cable without running into any voltage drop. Now, if you're using a cheaper grade light, don't stick to that rule of thumb because they will use more power and they might not operate. And same thing if you're using a cheaper grade transformer, same thing, it might not be putting out as much. I just know with the stuff that we use, the stuff that we recommend, um, you can easily get away with that. But uh, the nice thing with these two is that usually the taps on these bigger ones are uh, slightly bigger, so I can actually fit up to three wires in each one of these. So I can have three separate runs going out. So that's one thing too, that if you have to run 200 feet out that way and, two, and 100 feet out that way, um, you can do that as long as your total wattage is below uh, whatever size transformer you have, whether that's 150, 300 watt, um, then you can run multiple runs off of there. So basically now to go and test your transformer, I always say, you know, try and test it after you've got like your first light or so installed so that you don't have everything installed and then you go test it. Um, but it's pretty simple. There's usually a manual on off. You can just turn that on and then you can make sure it's working. If you don't have power, a couple things to check. I mean, obviously make sure this is on. Um, if this trips right away after you turn it on, so you turn it on and then it's gonna trip, you probably have a wiring mistake out in the field. That's why it's nice to do this as you're going along because you'll be able to tell if you're wiring properly uh, very early on. Once you get the hang of it, you might not have to do that as much, but check that. The other thing, once you turn it on, if nothing's working, I mean, go check your power supply. Uh, in this case, I'm just using an extension cord, but let's pretend this is our wall outlet. Um, if you don't have power here, then your transformer is not gonna work. So that's one of the first things you should check is just make sure you have power at that outlet. Um, so that is one thing to check. Uh, a couple other things you can check 
Uh, one is, see this little plug in here? If this is unplugged at all, it's gonna turn it off because it's gonna break the circuit. So you wanna make sure that that is plugged in. Um, the other thing is there's a photo cell. A lot of these will have the option for a photo cell whether you want to or not. I'll talk about the different timer options in a second here. Um, but you'll see this little white thing in here has this continual loop. If this is loose or not improperly or this gets cut, then that's not gonna operate properly. So you need to make sure you have this and you have that little clip in there. Um, so those are really uh, the things to check on the transformer. There's not a whole lot else. If none of that works um, and, it, and um, you know, you've say you've turned it on, you've got power and it tripped, well then it's prob probably more than likely it's not the transformer, there's an error out in the field. But if you can turn it on and nothing happens, check those things. If not, you might just have a dud transformer. Um, but I like these transformers because and not just this model, but any of the good stainless steel ones, there's a lot of the ones that you'll find at the big box stores that have these little um, uh, digital displays with uh, a photo cell on off timing. Um, you know, from experience, most of those are garbage. You probably want to go with some type of, uh, I'll call it a uh, professional grade transformer, and then you can use all kinds of different timer options with that. So. The one that I like best is uh, any kind of smart timer. We use the, the Yon ones a lot. Um, biggest reason is because they are built a little bit better than some of them. And I know it'll last in the elements. We've been using these now for five, six years uh, up in Calgary here where it gets, you know, minus 40 sometimes and still works the majority of the time. Some people have troubles if they have a poor internet connection and that kind of stuff. Uh, the one thing I will say is when you're setting this up, um, go do it inside the house, just plug it into the wall, close to your router, set it up. Once it's set up, then you can go and plug it into your transformer. It doesn't need as strong a signal, uh, which is pretty common with a lot of smart devices. But there's two ways you can hook this up. One, you can actually go and just unplug this. You can plug uh, your, your plug in into there, and then you can plug this back into your timer. Uh, and then you can operate that. This is just a manual switch. It allows you to turn it on and off manually. But once it's set up, you can do all this from your phone. The only reason sometimes we don't do that is it can, it can be a little tight trying to get it back inside the box. So if you don't want to do that, um, the nice thing is it does keep it out of the elements. Uh, so it might last a little bit longer. The only thing is sometimes, uh, depending on the strength of your Wi-Fi, uh, it can be a little harder for your router to pick it up. So if that's the case, the other option is to unplug it from there. Again, make sure that this is always plugged into something. Otherwise, your lights won't operate. Plug that back in. Oh. And then what we do is rather than plugging uh, this directly into the wall, so our transformer directly into our pretend wall here, we're actually going to go and we're going to plug that into the base of our timer. And then we're gonna go plug this into our receptacle and then we're gonna get the same outcome. But sometimes you get a better signal uh, if you do that as opposed to having it in there. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so that's uh, the other reason I really like the Wi-Fi option is because it gives you so many different options and timer settings. So you can set it up to work with dawn and dusk based on your geographic location. Um, it'll know when sunset and sunrise is, so you don't need to have a photo cell. Um, it has a variety of other timers too. If you just want to set the time from, you know, 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. or 2 a.m. or anything like that, you can do that. The other thing is you can set two separate timers on it, so you can have a timer that tells it to come on when sunset um, when sunset arrives, and then you can have another timer that'll tell it to just come off at two in the morning or one in the morning or whatever. So you can play around a lot more with that. Uh, it just gives you a lot more options. But if you don't have the ability for Wi-Fi or you have spotty Wi-Fi at your house and it just doesn't seem to be working, the other option is now you can go and add something like a photo cell. Um, so basically the photo cell, I'm, I'm not going to take it out on this uh, particular transformer, but usually these ones have like a little notch that you can notch out and then that just kind of screws into there and the wire comes through on the other side and it just sits in the sun. The nice thing is this has a little black cap on it. If it doesn't, you can just um, 
put some black electrical tape over it to test the uh, to test the make sure that it works. But basically, all you need to do for a photo cell is unplug this little dealio. I usually leave it in there in case we ever change our mind or need it down the road. You plug this in, and then you have lights that are going to work with dawn and dusk. Um, I'll just take that off. Uh, it usually takes a while to. So if you're testing it, it takes a while to pick up the setting of uh, daylight or nighttime. So you might have to let it sit for a bit. I'll let it sit for a bit here um, and it should turn off our lights. And then the other thing I'll talk about is sometimes you want to have them come on with sunset, but then you don't want them on until the morning. So what you have to do if you're using an option like this is you have to go get like a, a little um, analog timer like this that basically has uh, the time 24 hour clock around it and then all these little notches. So basically what you do, I was just waiting for my lights to go out here, but it's taken a while. Um, I know this one works because I did just test it. Uh, we'll give it another second, but basically what you do is now this little plug, I'm gonna leave it for now, but you unplug that. And then on your um, little analog timer, there's gonna be a place to plug that in. And then you're gonna plug your analog timer into your uh, transformer and then what happens is now you can this will turn the lights on when the sun goes down and this now you just set the timer usually what I'll do is I'll move up my little notches so say I want it to go off at 2 in the morning well I'll usually set this to come on at 1 a.m. and then off again at 2 a.m. so that I know that my lights are gonna come on first when this comes on but then this is gonna turn off at 2 and it's gonna shut the power and then I can shut my lights off at that time. So basically all you do, my photo cell doesn't wanna turn off here right away. Like I said, it does take a while, be patient with it. Um, and I know that this one in particular, uh, this is an older one, so it doesn't fit in this transformer, but basically what it would look like is I would just plug that in. I would plug that into there, I would plug that into there, and then I would have both my photo cell and my timer set up. Uh, so it would give me very similar options to what I'd be able to do with my Wi-Fi timer. But obviously, if you have a Wi-Fi timer and you can use that, you get so many more options with this. Uh, so I would recommend it. And even if you have a smart home system already, it doesn't have to be this one. There are all kinds of them out there uh, that range from 25 to 75 bucks, depending on the system that you have. But if you have a smart system, just do a quick Google search, find out if it has an outdoor Wi-Fi plug, um, like I said, 25 to 75 bucks. Whereas if you have this and this, you're already probably 70 to 100 bucks. And this is a way more uh, archaic system uh, than the Wi-Fi is, but sometimes you don't have an option. So hopefully that helps give you some ideas for timer settings, a couple troubleshooting things for your transformer. If you have more questions about transformers, go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, search Lighting Doctor, Transformers, uh, Wiring, Lighting Doctor followed by pretty much anything and you'll get uh, most answers to the questions that you guys have about low voltage landscape lighting. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.